Mimsy is short, plump. Okay. <laughs> Looks like a guy for a second. The hair. <laughs> or you can count on me to throw up <laughs> after eating this meal. Here we go. Let's get started. Today we're going to do an idiom chat. And the idiom is, you can see it on the screen, it's count on. All right. So I'm Michael and this is? Chloe. <laughs> this is Chloe. And we're from Able Idioms. Our motto is, master your idioms. Master your English. Right. You can find us on ableidioms.com and on social media. We have something new for you every day to help improve your English idioms. Fantastic. So once again, we're going to talk about an idiom today. It's a wild and crazy idiom. Count on. Hmm. I think we should explore what the idiom means. What do you think, Chloe? Silence. Silence. Okay. So count on means, can you read, Chloe? You, you are able to depend on someone or something. All right. So can you explain to our wonderful viewers what depend on means? Depend on mean is that you depend on someone, you rely on someone. Ooh, I like the word rely. Right, so someone is maybe responsible, and when they say something, they'll do it, right? They'll follow up. You can depend on them. You can count on them, all right? Or another way to use count on is? You expect something to happen in a certain way. Right, so you can count on me changing the slides for this presentation, right? So you can trust that I'll do something. Hopefully I will be responsible. Mm -hmm. So you can count on me. So those are the different meanings for count on. Let's see an example. Okay, here we go. We can count on Fred to cook a delicious, savory meal tonight. We can also count on him getting drunk and chewing on the rug. Okay, so we have count on. We have it two times here, once and twice, right? So let me ask you a question, Chloe. When we say we can count on Fred to cook a delicious savory meal tonight, do you think we're using the first part or the second part? The first, de first part of the definition or the second part? What do you think? I think the first definition. I think I like that answer. So we're able to depend on who? Fred. Fred, and he must be a great cook because he is, he's gonna cook a delicious, savory meal tonight. Chloe, do you know what the word savory means? Uh, no. Shall we look on image search? I think so. So let's type in savory food. All right, so Chloe, tell me what you see. Ooh. Ooh. Cookies. <laughs> and would you say this food looks good or bad? Bad and good. <laughs> bad and good. Well, let's see. What kind of food do you like to eat? Give me an example. Ooh, spaghettis. Spaghetti. So if you like this food and it's something that you find delicious, you could say it's savory. It tastes wonderful. It's tasty. It's delicious. It's scrumptious. So, savory means what? Scrumptious. <laughs> scrumptious. All right. So, savory means delicious. Let's see. Why don't we go here? We'll just put a bunch of words to describe how food tastes if it's good. Savory, delicious, scrumptious. Fantastic. Fantastic, tasty, hmm, oh, delectable. Realistic. 
I spelled it wrong. Google told me I spelled it wrong. Okay. Uh, realistic? Hmm. So we're describing the taste of the food, that it's wonderful. So let's see. All right. So let's just say the words for our viewers. And how about we take turns? And after we say it, we pause. So whoever's watching this video can repeat out loud after us. So I'll go first. Savory. All right. Your turn. Go ahead. Delicious. Scrumptious. Fantastic. Tasty. Delectable. Delectable, right. So all of these words we can use to describe food that tastes good. And since we describe food that tastes good, maybe we'll describe food that tastes bad. So how about first we'll look up some pictures of what, nasty food? <laughs> okay, I'm not sure what we have. Ooh, this looks interesting. Oh, All right, looks my like brain is going to get cold <laughs> someday. <laughs> Tell me about this picture, Chloe. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's not nice. Uh -huh. It looks like a brain. Looks like a brain, I agree. Let's see if we can make this picture a little bit bigger. Ooh, you can count on me to make this picture bigger so it's easier for everyone to see. So I would agree. I think I see some brains. I have no idea what kind of brains. What do you think this thing is in the middle? Sausage. A sausage. sausage. Sure, a hot dog maybe. How about the green stuff over here? Flowers. Flowers? <laughs> I don't know. Some sort of like what parsley or something that they put along with the dish to make it look better i don't think it's helping how about this uh can, go ahead you can count on me not to eat, eat this <laughs> or you can count on me to throw up <laughs> after eating this meal or vomit <laughs> so what, what do you think this uh it's like yellow stuff is what do you think it is <laughs> Melted cheese Ooh. on a hot sunny ice cream day? <laughs> I guess it's like uh, the special sauce. Sauce is the boss. Okay, so I'd say that's some pretty nasty food. Let's go back to where we are. So what words can we use to describe food that's not so good? Nasty. Nasty. Undelicious. <laughs> Undelicious. See, I don't think that's a word. Let's see what Google says when I type it in. Undelicious. Ooh, it didn't put a red line under it, so we'll keep it. And or else you could just say not delicious. Unfantastic. <laughs> we'll try to stay away from un because a lot of them don't make sense. How about horrible? Untasty. Untasty. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, um, horrible, um, it'll make me vomit. <laughs> I feel like throwing up. All right. All right. It's time for pronunciation. Do you want to go first or should I go first? Me. All right. So I'll highlight it. You read it and then we'll pause. So whoever's watching, practice your pronunciation. Wherever you are in the world. Go ahead. Nasty. Undelicious. Not delicious. Horrible. Terrible. It'll make me vomit. feel like throwing up yes okay so let's see I do feel like throwing up <laughs> we won't look at that picture anymore okay so we can count on Fred to cook a delicious savory meal so a delicious tasty meal 
And we can also count on Fred to do something else. We can count on him getting drunk and chewing on the rug. Hmm. What do you say we take a look at drunk people? Oh, Ooh, boy. <laughs> oh boy. How would you describe that? Hmm. He has a big belly. And I don't know what that is on top. I think it's a bottle of whiskey or alcohol or some sort of alcoholic beverage that he's probably been drinking a lot of. Right. Okay. And always nice to see drunk people laying on the street. Not so much. Okay. So Fred may be a wonderful cook, but we can count on him. We can expect him to get drunk and chew on the rug. Hmm. For everyone who doesn't know what a rug is, Chloe, can you explain it, explain it to them? A rug, a rug <laughs> is something that dogs can accidentally chew on and pee on. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Can you think? Of, can you think of another word for rug? Slug. <laughs> well, there's rug and then there's carpet. And we, since we live in Indonesia, we don't really have carpets on the floor. But back in America, we did. But a rug is usually just like a kind of a smaller piece. It doesn't cover the whole floor, but it, you know, provides warmth and it's soft to walk on. And a carpet usually covers the whole floor. Everywhere you walk, there's carpet. Right, so that's the difference. That's exciting, but not as exciting as Fred chewing on it. <laughs> hmm. Maybe he's cooked so many times and he's spilled so much food on the floor that the rug tastes like his savory food and he likes to chew on it after he gets drunk. Okay, all right, anything else you want to add, Chloe, or should we move on to something else? Move on to something else before I also get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to stick with the idiom count on because that is the theme of this lesson. Even though we're talking about vocabulary and conversation and stuff, here we go. We have a picture. Woof. So over here you can see we have count on. And over here I'm going to type when necessary. So first we're going to describe the picture, but before we even do that, I think we need some names. Chloe, could you give me names of these two ladies? Frizzy and Picky. All right, who is who? Who's this one over here? Picky. What? Is that even a name? <laughs> now it is. It's How do you, just now. How would you spell it? Picky. P-I-C-K-Y. Picky, okay. And what's her name? Frizzy. How about we just p pick a very... Common name like Mary. What about Chloe? <laughs> you want Chloe? All right, we'll, yes. we'll, we'll spell this one with a K so people know that it's not you, even though you look completely different than this lady here. So how about this? Let's describe the picture, and let's start with the, the location and the environment. What does the word environment mean? Can you tell can you tell everyone? Environment means where people are surrounding you. Yeah, your surroundings. All right, so what's around you? Okay. So in this picture, what is the environment? Uh, computer people? Computer people. Uh, you maybe you could say a computer lab. That could be the location. Or maybe in what office. Is or maybe they could be a secret computer lab. Secret computer lab. I like that. That's much more exciting. <laughs> a secret computer lab. So an office for sneaky spies. All right. And what is a spy? So this is one spy, right? And then it'd be multiple spies. So what is a spy? A spy is someone who spies on people, usually at the nighttime, 
they just watch people and sometimes even follow them. <laughs> sure. So like there's, me. they're spying on someone. They're looking at someone while the other person doesn't know that they're looking at them, right? So they're spying. I'm curious what pictures it says for a spy. Ooh, right. Oh. I like like James Bond. Perfect. He's a spy in the movie. In the movie, all the James Bond movies, and he has this like, incredible life, and he's whatever, whatever, and yeah. So he's a spy. Good example. Okay. So we did the location. The location is probably an office for sneaky spies or a secret computer lab. The environment is similar. It's inside a building, and it's in the room. Okay. Can you describe anything else more about the room? It's really dark. Ah, the room is dark. And why do you think it's dark? Because they're a secret. <laughs> the room is dark because it's a what? Secret location? Secret location. Inside a... Oh, how about this? Under the ocean. <gasps> <laughs> I never... It's possible, probably not so possible, but who cares? We can talk about whatever we want. Okay, so uh, what do you think Chloe and Picky are doing on the computer? Well, first off, what are they doing? Or should we start even a different place? How about this? Can you describe Picky? And then maybe I'll describe Chloe. How would, how would you describe Picky? Or picky, yep. Pick? <laughs> it's not a toothpick. <laughs> I say picky is bored. <laughs> picky is bored. Okay, so that describes kind of her emotional state. How about what she looks like? Picky is what? Is delicious. <laughs> Hmm. Or oh, oh, this. Picky has what? If you want to describe her appearance. Has long hair. So Picky has long hair. And can you give more details of the hair? We'll add another adjective. Long what? Long black or brown hair. Okay. It has long black or brown hair. Um, we could also say Picky is, you could say Caucasian. If you're like the the government, they like those big words, or else you could just say picky is white, is a white person. That's up to you. Um, picky looks like she, yeah. <laughs> and how do you describe her physical location for her body? Standing up, sitting down, running down the street, what would you say? Sitting down. Picky is sitting down. Right. Okay. And how would you describe what she's doing with her hand? She's going like this, and now I'm going like this. Stop copying other people. <laughs> so what is what is Picky doing? Picky is picking her nose. <laughs> well, her finger's close, right? So she can just go bing and be right there. We could say Picky is resting her what? On her Hand. fist. So she's resting her what on her fist or on her hand? Two fists? <laughs> she's resting her chin, right? So maybe she's getting tired of holding her head up, so she's going to be uh, resting her chin on her hand. All right. So that was picky. Why don't we take a look at Chloe? Do you want to describe her? Or you start and then I'll jump in where we need? You start. I start. Okay, so Chloe is, well, let's see, Chloe is a woman. <laughs> I guess we never established that. If people can't see this picture, people might not know that Picky is a woman. Well, I guess we said her and long hair, but okay. So Picky is a woman. You could say Picky is a white woman. Chloe. Chloe, I, uh, Chloe is a white woman. She, Chloe, she has long blonde hair that hangs down to her almost to her 
to her elbows, probably, huh? Uh, she has blue eyes and a pointy, a pointy long, nose. Long, ferocious nose. <laughs> a long what? Ferocious. Voracious. If, if that's a word. Voracious. Let's see. A long. No. Ferocious. 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 Yeah. Well, let's see. I'm not sure if that's a word or not, but we have ways to find out. Did you mean varicose? No. <laughs> Voracious. Let's see. Yes. Grace is speaking or representing the truth. So when you see her nose, you think of uh, the truth? All right. I know. I'm weird. <laughs> Voracious. Okay. Uh, you could say Chloe is standing up next to Picky's desk. Picky. Right. They. Yeah, Picky got a name. They are both staring at the computer. Okay. So if you had to summarize this picture in just a couple quick sentences, what would you say? Because we didn't summarize here, we, we added a lot of details. If you just quick looked at this picture, and then you talked to your friend on the phone and you said, I see a picture, but you only have a short amount of time to describe it, what would you say? I see a man behind them both that looks creepy. That shouldn't be in the picture. <laughs> well, we need to summarize. And he's there, he's part of the environment. But if you quick, well, let me give you an example. If I quick saw this picture and I had to summarize it, what did you see? Oh, I see two women staring at a computer. One was standing up and the other was sitting down. I would probably say there's three people in the room and they look mysterious. Yes. So who do you think the guy in the background is? Uh... Who is the guy in the background? His name is George. <laughs> His name is George. All right. Is he a spy too? Yes. All right. So maybe we'll add a, a name tag for George. Sorry, George. We kind of forgot about you back there. So there's George. His name is George. So what can you tell me about George that you can see? I'll move this out of the George way. George is wearing sunglasses that I can see. On, right here on his eyes, just okay. peeking up a little. There's something really dark. So that okay. must be sunglasses. In a dark room, and he's wearing sunglasses. Ah. Okay. So what is George? What What is George doing? He's using his computer for who knows what. <laughs> right. So for who knows what? If someone says for who knows what. It just means it could be something that we have no idea what it is. For who knows what? No one really knows. Okay. All right. So, let's see. Anything else you want to say about this computer or about this picture? No, not really. All right. So, it's not really an exciting picture. It's more exciting if we build a story with it. So, maybe the story is once upon a time there were three spies in a secret office under the ocean, and there was a storm, and suddenly a whale s smashed into the office and water went in and everyone died? Ooh. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next picture, are we ready? We're ready. Your silence, I will take that as a yes. All right, okay, Woo. a little bit different, so. Can, can you start with the location and the environment? Where are we? Where do you want to start with the names? The names. Okay, go ahead. You can pick both. Pick something that the people that are watching this video, it's, you know, that they would <laughs> think of as real names. Or we could Mark call Mark Ronson for the lady. What's her name? Mark Ronson. For the lady. Mm -hmm. 
Well, let's just be straightforward. I think it'd be easier for whoever's watching this to just use regular names because we're going to refer back to them and then it won't be confusing. So, Mim Mimsy, okay, there what? it is. <laughs> okay, and the guy? Frank. Frank it is, okay. All right, let me take a drink. And can you tell me about the environment, the location? Oh, cheers. All right, so what is the environment? What do we have? The environment looks like it's really quiet. All right, it's quiet. And would you say it's inside or outside? Outside, and it's peaceful. It's peaceful, okay. And... Uh, I'm going to jump in as well. I would say they're close to the water. And I'd probably say like a lake. And Or a river. Or, oh, it's possible, sure. And I think they're walking on a dock. Do you know what a dock is? It's been a while yes. since. Yes? Let's take a look. We'll put walking on a dock into Google search. Bye-bye, Mr. Spy. Okay, so this is like a dock. You might be in a tropical place, but a dock is just like a wooden or steel or aluminum platform that extends out over the water. Oh, there's a naked, <laughs> naked kid running down the dock. All right, so there's a dock. And docks are useful also for boats um, because they can pull up next. See, right down here looks like there's a boat. So they're outside, it's quiet, and it's peaceful. They're close to a lake. They're walking on a dock. Can you tell me about the temperature? The temperature looks like it's really cold. Okay. And what makes you think it's cold? Because they're wearing sweaters. Ah. And not only sweaters, what else? What do you call it? Purses? Well, big coats, winter coats. Winter coats. Yeah. And it must it not be... It seems like... Uh-huh. Um, Missy. Mimsy. Mimsy. Her head... Uh-huh. Uh, on top of her head, the tree, it looks like it's spring. <laughs> or maybe autumn. Oh, the tree in the background. Uh. Yeah. It's possible, right? Maybe it's heading towards winter or right after winter. But either way, the leaves aren't green and they haven't grown yet, right? So I agree. All right. And they're walking on a dock. And let's see. What do you think is their destination? The mo their mall. A their mall. mall. So they're going to go shopping? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and maybe maybe they're outside just to walk, to have a nice stroll along the beach. Take, take uh, a stroll is another way to say go for a walk. A stroll is just walking. So you can say go for a walk. It's not running, it's not jogging, it's not racing. It's just nice and easy going for a walk. Okay, so here we go, environment and temperature. It's quiet, it's outside, and it's peaceful. They're close to a lake, they're walking on a dock. It's cold, they're wearing winter coats. What is their destination? They're going to their mall. I guess they're gonna go shopping. What do you think they're gonna buy, Chloe? Um, a calculator? <laughs> maybe, maybe they don't have cell phones. So if they don't have cell phones, then they won't have a calculator on their phone, right? Okay. So tell me about Mimsy. And then we can also talk about Frank. Can you describe Mimsy for me? Mimsy is short, plump. Okay. <laughs> Looks like a guy for a second. The hair. Oh. Okay, so you say you'd probably say short hair, right? Yeah, short hair. So she has short hair. Let me put their long name. Arms. And long arms. 
I bet maybe Mimsy is a kung fu master, huh? So she's short and plump. Can you explain to everybody what plump means? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> well, plump, well, the opposite would be skinny, right? Like super skinny. So plump just means you have good a good amount of bones and fat and muscle. So you're not skinny, but you're not fat. You're just kind of plump. Like maybe, I usually hear if it's a plump chicken. Let's see. A chicken? Plump chicken. So it looks like there's a lot of meat on it, right? So it's great for cooking and for a meal. It's plump. So if you, if you call a person plump, do you think they would take that as a compliment or an insult? Maybe both. <laughs> Maybe. Depending, right? I would guess that most women would say that it's not, very, it's not a compliment to be plump. Especially in the Western culture, so everybody wants to be slim and trim. But, okay. So she's short and plump. She has short hair. Okay, so what else can you tell me about Mimsy? She's short and plump. She has sh short hair. What else? Mm, she has glasses or maybe sunglasses. Okay. She has a coat. She has long pants. All right. And... She has a nose. <laughs> right. To hold her sunglasses? To hold up? Her sunglasses. Right. Okay. So why don't you read, read to everyone about Mimsy? She's short and plump. She has short hair. She has sunglasses and is wearing a coat and long pants. She has a nose to hold up her glasses. Yep. Her sunglasses. Sure. All right. So I'll start with Frank and you jump in if you have any ideas that you want to add. I would say Frank is taller than Mimsy. He has glasses. Um, he's wearing a black coat and black pants. He doesn't look very excited. <laughs> Uh, he's looking down at the ground. So maybe he's not having a great time. So do you want to add anything? Mm, I don't think so. All right. So I'll read this one. Frank is taller than Mimsy. He has glasses. He's wearing a black coat and black pants. He doesn't look very excited. He's looking down at the ground. Okay. So that's Frank and Mimsy. Do you want to try to summarize the picture or shall I? Go ahead. Ooh, thank you for this opportunity. So if suddenly... Oh, just joking. Oh, you want to do it? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so summarize means to condense, to make smaller, to make shorter. So we did kind of a long explanation about this picture. I'm just going to summarize it in a couple of short sentences. So if suddenly, boom, I saw this picture. I'd say, I see an older couple walking outside. I think they're on a dock, and behind them, there's water and more docks, and it looks like it's cold out. Dee -dee -dee. That would be it. Okay. All right, do you want to add anything else about this picture, or shall we wrap up? We'll wrap up for wrap today. Up. Wrap up. Okay. So let's just review what we covered today. We covered the idiom count on. Ooh. What we should probably do first, real quick, can you make a sentence with this picture using count on? I count on them to finish their mission. Ooh. Right. I count on them to finish their mission. Maybe you hired them and you're paying them and they're doing something for you and you need, you need to count on them. So you trust them. All right. Let's, let's see. I'm going to get rid of this stuff. Can you make a sentence using count on with Frank and Mimsy? I count on them to buy all the stuff on their list. All right, to buy, let's see, how about everything on their list? Yeah. All right, we can count on them to keep walking because they want to get to the mall. Or we could also say, I trust that they will buy everything on their list. 
we can depend on them to buy everything on their list. Okay, so let's get to the review before we wrap up. We did count on, and count on means you're able to depend on someone or something. What else does it mean? Go ahead, Chloe. You expect something to happen in a certain way. Right, you expect, you think something will happen in a specific way. You probably have a history, so you count on it, you depend on it happening a certain way. All right, then we continued and we used some pictures and we described the pictures and then we came back and we made some sentences using the idiom of today, count on. All right, so we had the spy situation and then we had the, the lovely older couple walking outside. So that's it for this lesson. We're going to wrap up. Once again, I am Michael and this is... Chloe! Bread. <laughs> yes, it's Chloe. All right, and we're from Able Idioms. Our motto is... Master your idioms, master your English. All right, master your idioms, master your English. You can find us at ableidioms.com and... Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> YouTube, and Twitter. Right, we're all over social media, and we have something every day for you to study, to learn, to improve your ability to use English idioms. All right, so that's it for today. Thumbs up. We'll see you next time.